In this video, I'm walking you through how to do progressive supine groin if you don't have an Egoscu method tower. So um, if you've read the pain-free book, you will have seen um, pictures of the Egoscu tower. And if you are able to get hold of one, I fully recommend, honestly, for most people's postures, um, investing in one. They really do suit most people because they tackle tightness in the hips and most people have tightness in the hips. They are a very powerful tool um, that are not to be underestimated. However, if like me, you live in the UK or Europe or basically outside of America, it's really difficult to get hold of a Goski Method Towers. So I wanted to put it out there that if you are able to, that the massive preference is to get yourself one. But if you can't, there are some ways to try and get around uh, not having one, although I have to admit the effects are probably not going to be quite as potent and powerful, um, but still going to do something. So definitely worthwhile giving it a go, even if you can't get hold of one. So what I've got set up here is a uh, little mini stepladder type thing. Um, this could be what you use, or if you can think of anything else that is sort of in this shape, you may also be able to use a stack of books as well. Um, and I'll show you what we're going to do. So then hopefully if you can think of anything creative, you might be able to come up with something similar yourself. I've also got a static back setup for my other leg. So what we're going to do is we're gonna have one leg outstretched and our ankle on the top here, and we're gonna be moving it down bit by bit by bit by bit over time. And then the other leg is gonna stay at 90 degrees over something. So I have this set up, but this might be the side of a bed, it might be the side of a sofa, it could be like a coffee table or something like that. Um, but for the purpose of the video, this is what I have. So I'm gonna show you this as best I can, uh, so that hopefully everyone gets the joy of relaxing off their hip flexors, even if you are unable to get yourself an Egoski Method tower. So this is how I'm setting up. I have got my right leg over my static back uh, setup here, and I'm really, really switching off my right leg. So I want it to be that the cushions that are sort of underneath my calf, or whatever it is that you're putting um, your leg over, is high enough that you are able to switch off all the muscles in the leg. If my right ankle was lower than my right knee, I would be holding tension in my leg in order to keep it straight, or the leg would kind of flop out to the side. So I'm keeping my right hip, my right knee, my right ankle and my toes all in alignment with the hip, but that it's fully relaxed. And that will come with how high the thing is that you've got your uh, leg on. As you can see, with my left hand side, I'm taking my left ankle to the top of the um, step ladder, like so. And my upper body, I'm gonna have my palms out to the side, facing upwards, and I'm gonna have my arms at 45 degrees. So don't have your hands all the way over here. For most people, it won't create quite so much change in the shoulder. You can see how my shoulders are kind of up by my ears, whereas here, it's gonna help roll my shoulders back and down behind me. It's very tempting when you do um, any form of tower to want to be on your phone or to read a book. And I have to confess, I do do that sometimes. But if you want to get the full effects, you really should be relaxing through your hands and arms here. Because if you're sort of folding forward through your shoulders and keeping tension through your arms, you are not going to get the full effects of the exercise. So as your hips change and relax whilst you're in this, it can have a really profound effect on the upper body. And if you're clenching your phone or a book, that might not happen. So do bear that in mind. You're much better off listening to some music or meditating or uh, listening to a podcast or something like that, rather than doing anything with your hands here. So the right leg is kind of fairly straightforward. It's gonna stay like this the whole time. I'm really trying to keep the knee, ankle and toes in alignment with the hip and switching that off. With my left leg being propped up here, I'm trying, and this is kind of gonna be dependent on how you manage to set things up, trying to keep my toes, ankles, knees and hips in alignment here, but without, again, holding tension through the leg. So I'm not gripping uh, my sort of ankle to hold it in place or anything like that. We've got to be able to relax the legs here in order for the hips to let go. So I'm trying to keep things in a straight line as best I can, but I'm staying relaxed through the foot. And 
in the book it says for you to spend three minutes at this level and then we're going to start sort of moving our leg downwards um, moving it down the various levels and whilst that time is a good approximation be prepared to be in this way longer than three minutes um, per level so in the book they have to give you suggestions because they're trying to be as you know appropriate for most bodies they're trying to make it accessible for lots of people if you have really 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 tight hips you may be holding this for 15 minutes per level 20 minutes per level bearing in mind that we've got to move down all the levels on our left leg and then we've got to do the right hand side as well so this is not something to be rushed and if you're short on time i would recommend You've got to do both sides for balance, but I would recommend spending kind of 20 minutes on one leg and only doing the top two levels and then swapping to the other leg rather than doing like an hour on one side and then running out of time and not being able to do your right hand side. So don't worry too much, especially at the beginning about how far down you come with the leg. Think more about what your rib cage, lower back, pelvis and hips feel like. So when we're in this position what we are looking out for is how our lower back and our pelvis feel on the floor below us so for me i feel like my pelvis is relaxed and i feel like my spine is pretty grounded on the floor there might be a tiny bit of lift there but really i feel quite relaxed passively into the floor i'm not gripping my abdominals and i'm not pushing my lower back onto the floor nothing is waking up this is a passive position but what i'm tuning into is the sensation of my pelvis and my lower back grounding on the floor if i feel like i am grounded through my lower back and pelvis on the floor through both sides then i know that my hip is kind of functional in this position so the hip is relaxing the pelvis and the lower back are relaxing off that's fantastic that gives me that kind of go ahead that i am ready to move down a level so i've probably been here for over three minutes anyway but you know if you're ever doing it through the book you'd be here for three minutes if not longer so if you're feeling like your rib cage is up off the floor and you've got an arch or your hips feel wonky or you're not so grounded from side to side stay here for as long as it takes until your rib cage and lower back flatten without you having to put it there so you are not squeezing muscles to get you down in that position but now that i've been here for a little while and i definitely feel like i am grounded through this left hand side what i'm going to do is try and with my DIY setup move down a level so I'm going to kind of shift myself around I put that block on the step ladder um, just to give me so that the levels aren't too far apart from one another so the further down a level that you move the further you have to go the more your hips have to change so if you go down too far too quickly what you'll find is is that you probably have that sort of arching through the rib cage and lower back and there's still that tension there in the hip the more levels that you can create the more of a gentle sort of step downwards the exercise becomes so here once again i'm trying to keep my left hip kneecap ankles and toes in alignment the block actually works quite well it's quite kind of firm and supportive underneath my um, left ankle and um, when I look down at my foot there's no tendency for it to kind of roll out to the side or the whole leg to roll out to the side so we really want it to be that you are creating support underneath your foot and this is where not having the tower is quite difficult because when you've got the tower it's held in and um, this little pedal thing the foot is kind of contained you can fully relax off and you're not really having to think about alignment in the same way because you're being held in position whereas here we're having to sort of prop ourselves into it rather than us being supported in it so palms facing up arms out to 45 degrees to the side once again i'm switching everything off but i'm keeping the legs in alignment with the hip so knees ankles and toes on both sides are in alignment with my hip i'm spending three minutes here if not more but making sure that i'm keeping note of my lower back my pelvis and my rib cage so you can kind of play around with it slightly if you do smush your lower back down into the floor if there's any movement you haven't been in this long enough so there should be that there is no movement down on the floor and you feel fully flat so i've still got a little way to go i will set the timer here and what i'm going to do with you today is i'm only going to do uh my left leg for the purpose of the video otherwise i might be here forever but hopefully you get the gist of what we are going after as i said 
do not be tempted to rush this exercise. So I'm showing you kind of quickly moving down, but if I was doing this myself, I would probably be spending longer in each stage. And if I was short on time, I wouldn't just be focusing on my one leg. I'd be making sure that I did what I did on one side balanced with the other side. Saying that, you will likely find that one of your hip flexors is tighter on one side versus the other. So the same level might feel very different from side to side. So I know in my body that my left hip is uh, more relaxed than my right hand side. I'm tighter on my right hand side, so I might have to spend longer at each level on my right hand side until I get that effect. But really do time yourself, but don't focus solely on the time that you're spending in it. Focus on the postural change that is being created because if you rush through this and you're only spending a couple of minutes on each level and your body needs 15 minutes per level, you're kind of wasting your time. Like you might be doing something, but you're not getting the full release in the pelvic, lower back and hip area. Um, and you may have been better off spending 20 minutes just on one level than trying to rush through the whole thing in 20 minutes. So really relaxing everything, focusing on the breath, the palms are facing up. I like to kind of look at my shoulders here a little bit because as my hips let go, my shoulders also start to open up and relax a bit more. So I always start off very rounded through my shoulders and at the end of a tower session, my shoulders have really repositioned themselves. Another thing that's worth saying about this exercise is that you may feel stuff going on. So for lots of my clients, they will feel a bit of a stretch at the front of the hip. They might find that they feel a little flickers and bubbles and things happening through their legs and through their um, sort of pelvis and stuff like that. For many people, they might not feel anything when they're in it, but it doesn't mean that it's not valuable. So things don't have to be really aggressive burning exercises in order for them to be um, sort of impactful on your body. I personally don't feel that much when I'm in this. I don't really feel particularly any stretching. Um, I do get like a little bit of, as I said, sort of bubbling through the muscles as things are letting go, but it's how it makes me feel afterwards that can be really quite um, important. So it's also not like I walk away from tower and feel like, my God, my body feels amazing. I feel so loose, although some people will have that. What I notice is if I invest the time in have doing the tower and then I do an exercise menu afterwards, um, my body reacts way better to the exercise menu. So loosening off my hips like this uh, in the tower then will make other exercise that I do that day way more interesting and way, way better. Um, so do bear that in mind. Just because you might not feel that much in this one, it doesn't mean that it's not doing a lot for you. Um, it may be that you can feel lots of stuff when you're in it. It may be that you walk away and feel amazing. Or like me, it might be that you need to do something else afterwards to really highlight how much you have released tension through your pelvis and your hips. Okay, so I've done that level. And now what I'm going to do is take the block out the way, but I'm gonna put the leg back on here. Switching everything off, trying to keep that left leg in as good alignment as possible, I might sort of move things around slightly. I'm just watching that my left leg stays nice and straight. Everything stays relaxed and I've got to this level and I can definitely feel at this level how my pelvis kind of wanted to pull forwards so that I had a bit of an arch in my back. So I'm gonna kind of reset myself so that my pelvis is slightly tucked under but I'm not using any muscles to do that. And I've really got to try and relax everything here because I very much have a sense that my uh, rib cage is lifted off the floor. So those first two levels, I was if I was doing them myself, I probably would have thought I was ready to move on after the three minutes. For this one, I can definitely sense that there's some tension through that hip because it's pulling my rib cage up off the floor. So I need to just stay here for as long as I need, which is gonna be different for everybody, until I feel the pelvis kind of tilt backwards, relax backwards, the lower back and the rib cage smush onto the floor. I'm also feeling now that I've got more of a tendency that I want to kind of like clench um, some of the muscles through my leg so I can feel like my body's trying to kind of hold on to this and I have to keep telling myself to let go of tension through that left leg. Focusing on the breath, relaxing the foot as much as you can. Um, when I relax my foot on this level, the foot is kind of tilting out to the side. So if I was being really good, 
in fact I will do that because I'm doing the video so I should be very good shouldn't I I'm going to put the block there but I'm not putting my foot on the block I'm using the block to support my ankle so that it doesn't um, tilt to the side everything else stays the same so I want those toes to be in alignment with the hip as much as possible really relaxing everything off and breathing And the reason that I feel like I'm okay to only do this on one side, just so you know, is because I'm going to film another video afterwards demonstrating this in the Agoscu Tower. So I am going to be doing both sides, um, but one is the DIY way and the other is going to be with the uh, tower itself. Okay, so I'm going to start like rocking my pelvis backwards slightly here to see if there's any movement. There is a little bit of a movement, but there's not a huge amount of movement. Um, but in order to promote good habits, I'm going to stay here for a bit longer so that you guys are sort of seeing how this works. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm telling you what you're looking out for and what you have to respond to. So time doesn't matter what matters is is that you feel like your pelvis and your lower back have relaxed off and that is that sign that your iliopsoas your psoas muscle your primary hip flexor has let go um and you can't rush that for some people this might be something that you need to do every day for a month before you feel like your hips start letting go really readily if you're really really tight in your hips if you're very anterior um, things like that this can be a long-term investment but believe me it's a good one there are not very many other things that you can do that are as beneficial for your hips as this if you spend lots of time seating sit, seating seated <laughs> seated this is a great thing for you to do okay I think for the sake of time I am going to move my foot down Again, you stay here as long as it takes. I am just doing a video demonstration. This is not how I would be doing it if it was my own personal session and I had the amount of time that I like to spend in it. So now I've got a little bit of a problem with my, um, I've got to make sure that my foot is relaxed but it's still supported. And actually that works quite nicely. Sorry, my head is moving further and further away from um, the screen. My right leg is in alignment with the hip and relaxing that left leg and basically what happens is as your leg comes lower down to the floor you are requiring your hip flexor to let go and release your hip into extension so at the moment my hip isn't in extension but it's moving towards extension when it's flat on the floor that will be when it is in a position of extension and if your hips are tight what will happen is that the hip will stay in flexion and it will put the extension in your lower back which is what that kind of arching is so what we um what happens is, is because of the location of the primary hip flexor where it kind of connects it's underneath your rib cage at the back it's through the lumbar vertebrae and then it comes forward down into the groin if this muscle is sort of tight here and it's pulling you forwards that's why you feel that arching through your lower back so when that hip flexor is let go, it will kind of have this impact through the lower back and the rib cage. And that's going to be why it can have such a good effect on the shoulders. Certainly for me, I find that a lot that my shoulders feel quite different having done this beforehand. Keep breathing, keep relaxing. I really got to keep trying to remember to relax my left leg. I keep noticing that it wants to tense up. So I'm just trying to tell myself to relax it.
keep breathing, keep relaxing. Palms are facing up, arms to 45 degrees. Keeping your head relaxed, you can put your head in a pillow if you need. If there's any sort of neck tension, spinal tension, prop that head up as much as you need. The belly stays relaxed, the legs stay relaxed. Everything is supported and in the right position, but you're not using muscles to hold you there. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna tilt backwards slightly through my pelvis and my rib cage. And I don't know if you can see that on the video, but there's definitely a bit of movement there, which tells me I should be spending longer in this, but because it's a video, I'm not going to, and I am gonna move on after three minutes, but I would be holding this until there was none of that backwards moving, moving through my pelvis, lower back, and my rib cage. Okay, so we're at three minutes again. As I said, if I was doing this on my own, I probably wouldn't be moving down right now. And now I'm gonna take that block to the side so that it's gonna support my left foot so that my uh, left ankle doesn't kind of roll out and my leg is still facing in that upwards position. Setting the time again, sorry that I'm slowly moving away out of the screen, but my legs are really the most important thing here. Switching everything off. So hopefully, well not hopefully, but you'll probably be getting a sense of as you drop that foot lower, how you notice that there is more pulling forwards in the pelvis and in the lower back and that is that tightness through the hip. So as the foot comes lower, it's more of a challenge for the hip to relax into hip extension and therefore you might be feeling that compensation in the kind of lower back ribcage area. So just don't rush this, cannot reiterate that enough. Do as I say, not as I do. Uh, when I do this on my own, I promise I'm very well behaved with it, other than occasionally reading a book. Um, but for the video, otherwise I would just be here all day if I was filming this uh, as per my body, because my hips, especially on the other side, are super, super tight. Okay. And then we're gonna come down to the final level. So I'm gonna put my foot on the floor. So this is now, my hip is now in extension. The step ladder here is actually quite helpful because it's kind of propping my foot up in this like uh, supported position, but I'm not having to use any muscles myself to do it. So I'm able to relax off the hip and we're going to do the final three minutes. As I said, I'm not going to do this on the other side um, because I'm going to film a video afterwards using the tower, but you would be doing this again on the other side and being open minded about the fact that the other side may, may take you way longer or way less time because that hip may be tighter or less tight so you're feeling for that grounding through the rib cage lower back and pelvis on the floor you're not just timing a minute and 15 seconds left on my this side I'm breathing nice and deeply relaxing my hands my palms are facing up
rocking that pelvis slightly backwards and forwards. There's definitely quite a lot of movement here, so I, so I should be spending a lot longer here than the three minutes for sure. And as we rock that pelvis backwards, another thing that you can look out for is if your knee bends. So if you're rocking your pelvis backwards and you're like, oh yeah, I haven't got that far, but you're noticing that your knee comes up off the floor, that's that tension through the hip that's kind of pulling your knee up instead of um, instead of arching your back. So it's probably one or the other. You notice that you have an arching in your back and your calf is down on the floor, or if you push your lower back down, you might notice that your knee pulls up off the floor. It's still the tension in the hip that's causing that. So it has to be that the calf and the lower back and the rib cage and the pelvis are all grounded rather than one over the other. Okie dokie. So that was me doing the DIY version of Tower. I hope you found that helpful. It doesn't have to look like this, um, but most people hopefully have got a little step ladder, so there's hopefully a way of doing it. Um, and as I said, if you can get hold of one, I do thoroughly recommend getting an Agoski Method Tower because they are incomparable. Um, it, it's quite different doing it with that, but hopefully that was helpful. And make sure that you do the other side. We've got to stay balanced.